Hi, once again, most of the guys. Was anybody uh, there my previous? No, anybody who was not there my previous talk, yeah? Quite a few people. Okay, so I'll just customarily do this whole self pimping and, and then you'll get stuck. <laughs> okay, this uh, talk is about uh, <coughs> two frameworks for building mobile applications uh, a framework called jQuery Mobile and another framework called Sendchart Touch. Now, before I start telling you what I am, who I am, anybody who's like doing stuff on jQuery Mobile here, can I see the hands go up? Two people, awesome. Sencha Touch. Not many, three people, awesome. Anybody who's like doing stuff around mobile itself, like building apps on mobile, it's fine. Cool, awesome. Okay, so this talk is about these two frameworks and the juicy details in, in a while. This is the customary intro slide. Hare Shri Ramakrishnan for Worldwide Developer Evangelist. Just to show that I'm very important, I put the word worldwide over there. But I also go to Bangalore and Hyderabad. <laughs> <laughs> no mind. Uh, I'm also a moonwalking musician. I have a band called Agam. Uh, more on that later. A big Dream Theater fan. Uh, people who like progressive rock, Dream Theater is a progressive rock band. And most importantly, I'm an overall a very nice guy. Remember that. Okay. So. This is my pitch for this talk. Um, I cannot put the word I wanted to say in the slide, but what I really mean is opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. <laughs> right? So the point is, when you actually start telling me, no, no, I don't agree with you, this is like really cool to do with JavaScript, that means you actually are having one. <laughs> Just the way when I am saying it, I am actually having mine. And it is completely normal to have one. So let's not fight over shit here. This is my opinion about what is jQuery Mobile, what is Sencha Touch, and how I like it and how I do not like it. Now, if you don't like it, that's like really cool. But if you're already like a big geek in Sencha Touch, we are already built like three large scale applications and two enterprise applications on Sencha Touch, there's a brilliant session on the other room. I'd recommend you to go and check that out because I don't have anything to tell you. But if you are here to figure out what these two frameworks are about, from a humble beginner's perspective, you are at the right place. That's where I'll take you through. And one final disclaimer, I have not built a Facebook application using Sencha Touch or jQuery. I am a person who is trying to evaluate these two frameworks and try to tell you how exactly this would pan out for you for your real development. And finally, <coughs> I believe strongly in this. Real men don't use frameworks. As much as that pads my ego and everything else, it is not always true because if that was true, why would we care? Why are we here? We are here because the no problem, don't be shy. Come in, come in, come in. I'm gonna wait. There's a person who left. So do you want do you want to come? <laughs> Settle down, gentlemen. Are you comfortable there, sir? Okay, great. We have not done anything. We just said a couple mildly abusive things and a small introduction. <laughs> That's all we have done. We have, we have yet to enter. Please come in, sir. Don't be shy. Please. All right. So why should we care? Why should we care? Can somebody tell me why should we care about micro frameworks? Why should we care anything that is built on top of core? Can anybody tell me? Come on, guys. Why would I spend an extra five days a week in the office? Brilliant point. I'll go drink beer. I take that. Okay. Anybody else? Agree, man. Agree. Anybody else? Don't be shy, man. Why will we use a framework when everybody knows that everything can be hand coded from ground up? Why are there frameworks? There are frameworks because real applications. Wait a minute. That was one thing. Real applications. Much nicer. Real applications could actually use it. Right? Because uh, it's not always about what you want to do, it's about what you really have to achieve that should dictate whether you will use a framework or whether you will code up everything. Right? So you're, you're free to have your opinion, like I mentioned, but then it's important to understand why there are uh, micro frameworks. Right? Let me, this, um, this, this, this talk of mine, I'm trying to have a conversation with many of you. I, I really appreciate if you guys could actually answer back some of the things so that I can understand the perspective from which we are coming. Uh, when we talk 
a web application or a website, uh, what are we really building? Are we building a website? Are we building a mobile website? Are we building an application or are we building all of that? We are all building all of them, right? Think about it. We are all building all of them. But as much as we know we are building all of them, what really happens is like we acquire one skill. In many a times, unfortunately, it's jQuery. And we apply it democratically across all these problems. Correct? We do that? Uh, is that always the correct thing to do? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, no is harsh. Right, because there are people building really crazy shit with uh, jQuery mobile and it's just jQuery. So, no is wrong, but is it always the right thing is a question that we need to continuously keep asking back to ourselves. Uh, I will cut the preachy stuff in a while because I have real demos to show like the previous time, but I have to get the context going. I'm, I'm not going to uh, talk to you about the virtues and vices of frameworks. This is not what it is about. So, if you're building everything, you need to actually look at each problem in isolation and actually start thinking about whether what what framework or what technology or what kind of paradigm you want to apply um, across the solid problem, right? This is a slide which I directly flicked off the ImpressJS site. I really liked it. So I didn't even change the template of that. I just like the way it animates. So that's what I meant. So your choices would vary based on how you answered the last question. I think we unanimously answered the last question that we want to build. Everything, right? Okay. Self-explanatory. Every everything starts from here. Setup and configuration. If you're actually building the application like my previous talk where there's no setup, like you know, you're just trying to link a few simple jars in there, you throw a style sheet and you're ready to go. But then in a real situation, setup and configuration would actually mean a lot of things. Like you know, the, the more uh, the more abstracted you are, the more on frameworks you are, the more you need to pay attention in terms of how this thing is done. That's step number one. Step number two is, there's a two over there, okay, I mean, it's just bad typography, bad, <laughs> bad uh, projection, there's a two in there, so, and the approach, that's what should really matter. Now let me, I, I'll pause here and ask a question, how many of us actually write HTML markup, how many of us like to write HTML markup, answer it very carefully, how many of us <coughs> like to write HTML markup? <laughs> Your wife is gonna love you, man. <laughs> Seriously? It's just that I don't. No mind. How many of us like doing UI with markup? That's a different question. Some of us have to agree because maybe doing UI with a combination of markup and CSS actually changed the way we actually look at doing UI. Right? I mean, I mean, so, how many of us like to write only JavaScript to do everything? Wow. Wow. <laughs> he has such a nice and bright smile. <laughs> Maybe that explains, you know, he has that patience and perseverance to actually write a button in JavaScript. <laughs> and then set a label to it. And then set a listener to it. And then there is no real DOM inspection, so you have to put a breakpoint and see if this damn thing is actually firing. And, but it's a good thing, there are frameworks, to very, one of the frameworks that I'm going to talk to you about actually follows that pattern, so there are many, many more like you. <laughs> You're not alone, my friend. You're not alone. They want to use cappuccino. What's that? <laughs> okay. There are many, many more, as I said. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna call out some random slides here. See jQuery, I, I work for Adobe, I mean, I, I think I mentioned, and I have had the uh, privilege of Bain or whatever you wanna call, I have contributed to uh, some aspects of jQuery mobile framework, mostly around the theme roller application, I'll showcase that in a while, I've had the you know, fortune of kind of looking at it. So some of the other stuff that uh, you wanna think about jQuery is that most of the web developers that I talk to, web Website developers that I talk to, they tend to like jQuery because nothing changes. Right? The way you are doing websites all throughout your life by writing simple markup, that entire methodology continues and you can actually start doing your stuff. Right? <clears throat> Componentization is super simple in jQuery mobile. I'll show you a demo, which is because it's just attribute based model. Write a div, make it into a button, make it into a Full bar, make it into uh, anything that you want, like a list. It is just attribute based, which makes it super simple. 
attribute driven theming even better like you simply say data theme b data theme e you actually start getting things that look really nice so some of these things the, the whole C, the underlying css you are figured right and at the same time sencha how many of us actually dislike sencha here wow let me see the faces okay fine this stuff is going to be interesting okay there Can you put the hand up again for Billy? <laughs> Sencha haters incorporated. There you go. One beer also, gentlemen over there. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Sencha would mean no mockup, all JavaScript. The smiling friend of mine here would not mind that. Okay. Explicit component model. A list is actually a list and not a div. and not an a tag you don't have a question we'll come to that i mean were you there when i put my first slide <laughs> i will throw that up again no no that's just a joke i mean i'm i'm i'm, I'm just trying to uh, so right so i i understand where he's coming from i really like this by the way i mean i'm just doing a plug for this i'm i'm a, i'm not a fan of coffee script i'm not generally a fan of anything that is cross interpreted but i tend to like SASS and, and Compass, even the SAS kind of sounds bad. So I don't know. Is that how you pronounce it? SAS. Yeah. SAS, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's something which I really like about Sencha. I really like this aspect. The it's 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 inherently MVC. I mean, you can actually do your stuff in an MVC friendly way, and it comes along for free. Okay. I'm done. The painful part of my presentation. See, I mean, I I, I spent a lot of time to get to this many slides. Now we go to the easier part of this whole talk of mine. I'm going to actually start doing a demo, and like always, I like to do my demos and not show my demos. So uh, all the previous, if you remember my previous presentation, all the caveats that I mentioned there applies because I'm going to code up something in both the frameworks. Then again, like I mentioned, it's a beginner level thingy. Like if you've already done crazy lots of stuff in Sencha and jQuery, you're not going to find this super redundant and a waste of time. Uh, but now that you are so neck deep into my talk, just bear with me. But people who are like getting getting started, you will get a picture of what it really means to take these two frameworks and actually build a simple problem. Now let me ask you a, a problem statement. Out of ten mobile applications that I look at, nine of them will have a list in its home screen. All of us agree or no? Yes. Nice looking lists, of course, not the the ugly ones, but they are all. Uh, an implementation of a list so which would also mean that being able to build a list based application would be an important challenge to solve in mobile applications do we also agree to that yes yes yes, yes. yes. thank you that's always nicer to be more affirmative so that i understand we agree on right so as trivial as it would look like i'm going to start out on a a simple pursuit to actually create a simple non data driven list based application in both the frameworks i will do jquery first then i will do exe.js set and then we will pause and we will spend 3 minutes to bad mouth support which approach but but objectively we will understand what each one of them meant correct that's what my intention of this talk is right see it for yourself come to your judgment in terms of oh you know i like that one or i like this one i'm not going to tell you that right so what time am i at <laughs> you almost yeah. broke the camera <laughs> yeah so you're probably at uh, 15 15 minutes okay we will do this quickly right you know and and uh, i will keep talking as i write uh, my demo uh if something is shatteringly wrong or something that completely not making sense to you please interrupt me otherwise let's circle back once i'm through with so that we can actually save up some time cool with all of you guys if the like if i'm missing semicolons or if i'm actually doing something wrong interrupt <coughs> me same drill works okay okay don't like to write boilerplate so i'm just going to copy paste this but i'm going to write everything else pretty much
The page looks fine. I am also using a rather oldish version of jQuery Mobile. It is released henceforth. It's just that I was lazy to copy paste a template from Dreamweaver. It's actually 1.0. It's not a beta anymore. Uh, but for this demo that I'm showing you, it should just work. But then uh, I do realize that we have a newer version of, of jQuery available. Let me just quickly um, get the mock-up from here. What do we see here? So this is a classic jQuery mobile application, which starts with a tag which has got a data role called page. Right? And it also has an ID. And a standard unmodified jQuery template will consist of the three elements that we have, which is the top level is the page, followed by something called a header, something called a content area, and something called a footer. And uh, if you actually observe carefully, most of the mobile applications tend to follow that pattern. Not so much footer, but definitely header and content. Right? So now what we are simply aspiring to do here is to create a simple list, no data, nothing. So there is actually a unordered list tag that I put over there, the UL. And this is what I meant by saying you can have a attribute based component behavior, which is data role I'm saying is list view. So henceforth, whatever will be added into this unordered list. What goes into a UL? What is the tag, LI? Yeah. Correct, so whatever LI that you're gonna put inside this, is going to act like not as a bulleted list but as a mobile list right can we try doing that just uh, quickly do that Pretty much what a list looks like, right? It's got already the, the the styling. It actually has a header and footer. It almost looks like one of those nice little fat ass uh, mobile list icons. You did nothing, right? If you saw that, it was like dead simple. Now, if I want this to look any different, I will just come here and say data theme. So the jQuery follows a uh, A B C D E until Z sort of theming mechanism. So each one of them actually point to a CSS file. So it, it simply takes the value and kind of finds what CSS file you need to use and actually puts it. So let me do this. The more classic iOS sort of look. So, so all you needed to do is that much to actually create a static list. Now if you want to be able to click it, you can actually put an A anchor tag inside it and it can actually point to a, a different page and sorts. So who likes this? Awesome it is, ain't it? But will that solve all your problems? We will see in a while. See, that's that, That's the thing about... Uh, have you worked with insurance agents ever? <laughs> <laughs> jQuery Mobile's sense of easiness at times is like an insurance agent's promise. You go figure. It's not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing, but you always read the fine print, don't you? Because they actually play that in double speed. I do that in my studio. You know what that is? Insurance subject to market risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty similar to that. I'm not joking. So whenever you see something like really simple, there should not be a reason to actually adopt jQuery Mobile. Right? <coughs> right. Now, we will we'll take it a step forward and add like a dynamically populating list like you know you run through like a loop and add let's say 10 elements can you do that sure 
Billy, time please, man. Um, You're at 20 minutes. So I have like 10 minutes more to go, right? No, you have uh, 15 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah, it's fine. Let me not waste my time. So, document ready is a common thing. So, I'm not going to do uh, any of that. And let me go to. Uh, we'll make this quick. So, have it. Right, I'm going to run a for loop for like 10 elements and I want to add them to the list. So, what do you have to do? We will say, anybody familiar with jQuery would know what I'm doing. So, this is my reference to the list that I'm going to use, add stuff into. And all you need to do is I'm going to just use a snippet. So I'm just going to get a, a simple thing here, like what string is <coughs> li. It's hard to type. <coughs> this is fine. Yeah. So it's like item zero to ten, right? Yeah. Now I can say something like. The append method of jQuery allows you to accept a, a DOM element or a snippet of HTML. All of us know that. And can I run this now? Yes. Right? Let's see what happens. Let me just take off those uh, hard coded ones. We don't need them anymore. So I'm going to take that off and let's just run this. Let's see what we got. This is what we got. Does that look like a list? Doesn't, right? It doesn't look like a list anymore. It's just a ordered list. So that's something which, uh, you know, jQuery does pretty well. So you just come over here and say, This view is anybody who has worked with jQuery would know what uh, an initializer is. Like, you know, it's asking that particular DOM element to act like a uh, list. So let's. Right? And the beauty of the whole refresh method in jQuery Mobile, a good thing is that it actually knows what is getting added. So whenever you are adding like 10 more elements to it, jQuery Mobile actually refreshes only the styling of the added 10 elements. So it will not reload, restyle the entire thing, which actually gives it a pretty good performance <coughs> right now that is how long did that take to to do a jquery list it didn't take too long right was was that simple enough yes you guys like it yeah. i mean at least in terms of simplicity now we are going to switch games if we are actually going to do the same thing <coughs> you see sign chart same thing yes there's a question so why should i do this thing got refreshed Ultimately, a browser, if I do inner HTML, it should work with the... Correct, page. correct. So what, what really happens in jQuery mobile, unfortunately, is that, you know, whenever you're adding stuff onto, like, a DOM channel, jQuery sort of functions on a deferred instantiation model. It does not want to do the DOM traversal every single time the DOM is modified. Because what happens is like, that jQuery, the inherent model in which jQuery is programmed, the moment you add something onto the DOM, and if it actually triggers the, the DOM repainting, people will do crazy stuff on mobile. Like, you know, you can probably add like nested children. So what jQuery forces on is like saying, if you're actually converted a div into a component, it is your onus to actually tell when I should reapply the styles onto the DOM. So the same thing, if you actually just read that element, you know, and said dot inner HTML is this li and just call the style, it would just work. It is just that jQuery is forcing you to Believe that you're actually working with a list. You know what I mean? So uh, in, in jQuery, the issue is we're actually working with the div. But in real, jQuery wants you to believe that you're actually working with the... Uh, but doesn't it create an unnatural thing? This is very similar to... I mean, it's as simple as writing in Objective-C with widgets. But ideally, if I use a browser, one of the things, natural things to do is to use something like a template. Let's say I use... Point taken, point taken, uh, agree with you, but uh, unfortunately that's not what jQuery thinks about it is, but I agree with you. So that's that's what I mentioned at the beginning of the talk as well. So I, I said, real guys do not use frameworks. That was my first statement that I mentioned. So what you're saying is that I agree with you, but then 
uh, probably there are there are pros of actually using this, and you know people will certificate it. I, 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 I'll, I'll track back with you on this one. We can actually chat up about this. So for want of time, and you know I have to show you a couple more demos. Let us now do the ext thingy. Okay, I have a bootstrapped, you know, boiler-plated HTML here. But as you would see, there's nothing in the body. Because as I mentioned earlier, sir, we are going to write all JavaScript. Right, so I practiced this five times. That's why you have simplest five. Now I'm going to practice it once again, so simplest six. I have nothing to hide from you guys. It's not pirated, it's just that I didn't buy it. <laughs> Before somebody says that, you know, once somebody tweeted that too. Like I had an Adobe software and it said trial has expired. <laughs> Never mind. So, okay. Thank you. I'm losing concentration. Getting carried away. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is how you start every Sencha touch or ext project. Now it has got a, a, a whole set of things that you have to do, like you know the gloss icon, the start icon. I'm not going to do any of that for want of time. I am simply going to do <coughs> this is the same as your document dot ready in, in, in jQuery mobile, right? If I'm making any syntactical errors, I'm not a framework guy. If I'm making a syntax error, somebody point to me. The, the Sencha geeks here can help me with that. So, right now, what do we want in this application? We want to reproduce the same header footer thingy, right? Yes. So uh, let's do this. So, what Sencha wants you to do is what, what they want you to create what is called a panel. So you will say. Anybody who has worked with Java here, or like any of the programming languages would actually understand what this is. It's just instantiating a component and supplying properties to it in a simple object notation. Correct, so you would say, keep putting What is animation? When you're moving between two things, what is the animation that it should play? So I'm saying play a slide, that's the most common thing, right? And this is the important part. An array of items or views that this panel should contain. And right? that's at the present. So I'm, since we are going to have only like a one list in this, you know, that's, that's all we are trying to implement. So I will come here and declare a simple list. Fine. And say a simple list is equal to fine. Shall we run this? Screw the semicolon, I should just work. Yeah. Some random HTML appears there. Right. Now, this is just HTML, right, inside the view. But what we really want is the list. And what is the inherent property of a list? One, it has to be a component, right? It has to have contain something and then it has to repeat. That's how you get a list, one after the other. So, so for that, the first step we need to do is make this into a component. Can we simply do? Thirty minutes down, ten to go. Sure, I should be. I should be through. <coughs> you just create a new ext component, which is the one which will be rendered as the list item henceforth. Now the thing is here. Sencha has this very interesting concept called 
templates. Somebody just mentioned coding templates, the way how you could use templates instead of calling the list view or refresh and getting into the battle center treats it a little differently. So what they actually ask you to do is just create a simple HTML template. An HTML template is nothing but a comma separated HTML element that is separated into the template. So since it's passed in as a property, you cannot have a single string. So it is taken as a comma separated parameter. So something like this, see this. It's not, it's not difficult at all. So I have a div, a heading, and it's got a template actually takes something within curly braces. It'll take a heading within curly braces. It takes a text, right? So now what I can do is something super trivial. I'll create a, method called refresh <coughs> what do we have the template heading right and what else do we have <laughs> correct and now I will simply say So now, if we run, oh, what did I do? They close that. Sorry. Okay. Let's run this. Fine. So with that logic, if I do that, should repeat, right? Let's see. Not only does it not repeat. It actually breaks your code. That's because what you need to understand in, in programming is whenever you have an iterative thing, you have to actually ask the template to iterate through it. You know what iteration is, right? You supply an array, you have to go through each and every element of that array and then populate it. So that's what uh, this particular piece of code does for you. So I'll just replace this. Come out here. So I have an extra piece of code here which says TPL4 dot. When you say TPL4 dot, what it typically does is it, it takes the array that is passed on to it and iterates through that entire array. Fair? So let me run this again. It's there. It's there. This should just work. Let's see. Right? but no styling yet. In jQuery mobile at the same situation, we already had the styling baked in. But here there is no style. Right, now I can, you can argue that I can actually take it a, a step forward, write my own CSS to style it, which is correct. You can actually take a CSS and style it. So here is your Sencha touch code to create a simple programmatic list. And here is your jQuery mobile code to create, uh, not this one, this is actually a nicer piece of code. Where was that one? Demo one only. Demo one only, right? So here is our jQuery mobile code. Now, we saw two different approaches. One is the markup plus HTML based approach where some default styling was applied to you. And we saw a ext.js approach where nothing was on markup and we got everything else working by writing JavaScript. Let's quickly go back to the presentation. So. This is my opinion, like I said, this is my feeling. Page-based model, very good for guys who have been writing HTML pages all throughout your life, who are familiar with HTML. Easy ramp up, all of us agree, easy ramp up part. <coughs> Do you even remember what I wrote in Sencha? No, no. It will be difficult, <laughs> it will be difficult. I'm not joking, it was not a joke. It's difficult because it's 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 structured, but plays well with others. J that's a good thing about the whole jQuery thing. You can actually throw Angular there, you can actually throw some other framework. Uh, that's that's a really nice thing. I will pull up theme roller in a while. It's an application that we, I, I really like. And uh, nice default looks. Don't you agree? The default look was in itself pretty presentable. But super limited component set. Since we took the nice example of list, we are good. But then the component set is not really extensive. Every, anything else that you want, you'll have to take a third party plugin or write your own. No physics based scrolling. It's a big, 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 big stop, stop, huge dead stop blocker. There's no built in and there's no touch charting. That's uh, something which Sencha brings inherently to table. Very iffy documentation. This is my opinion. All you got is the jQuery mobile website. If you have a question, you have to view source and see what they have done. 
or go to Stack Overflow. And it potentially lets you write really bad code. Because there's no control imposed on you, you will actually throw in whatever markup you want to do, write your code wherever, give whatever random IDs that you want to give to your code, really no templating, again, reiterating the point that he mentioned, it is like random code thrown everywhere. Yes? What is that chart? See, basically the charts which actually work with touch inter interactions, you know, you can drill down. Pros of Sanjay Touch, as I see it, elaborate components at touch charting, built-in layouts, that's something which I didn't demonstrate, but if you want to show a vertical layout, or a horizontal layout, or a card layout, Sencha has components for that. For in jQuery, you'll have to go and tweak your CSS to say display block, display uh, none, or your position absolute, position ready. You have to do the whole CSS magic to get your layouts going here. MVC, of course, I'm a big fan of right, being able to write MVC of applications and forces you, to, you, I mean to say, sorry for the typo, forces you to write good code. As you saw, the way I wrote the EXT application, you cannot do a lot of bad things in there. It's pretty rigid and enforced. That is the way you do it and at, at the longer term you'll actually see that you've written actually a far more manageable good piece of code. The cons, it's completely unsuitable for web pages. If anybody is doing their web pages or websites with Sensor Touch, he will be a very patient individual. Or he's getting paid like crazy loads of money and I want that job. <laughs> Higher learning curve, too much boiler plating, 28 lines of code to actually show a small list. It's not boilerplate, it's a wrong word, but... And the fourth one, the most important one, which is like a huge deal breaker for me, it's a lock-in threat. You become a Sencha developer. Are you becoming a web developer or are you becoming a Sencha developer? The more and more you start suck, getting sucked into this markup, you'll become an expert at that and you will not give a damn about JavaScript in general. That happens now, that's very painful for me. I'm a no frameworks guy. I like to write plain, simple, stupid JavaScript. So anybody who is like a Sencha programmer is not funny for me. I mean, I'm not very impressed by a Sencha developer. Okay, you should be able to do Sencha, that's fine, but don't want a Sencha developer. There's no real interrupt story. You're a Sencha developer, it, it's almost like you don't need anybody else. I give you everything that you want. That's the kind of attitude that I see uh, from them. Again, one more demo. I call this the other one. I need to be really quick at this. Yeah. I know that. Uh, yeah, like seven minutes, uh, five minutes, let's see. Customary Twitter application, yawn. You can yawn now, but that's all I got time for. I planned it correctly. So I'm not going to code this. I'm just going to show this to you, which I have already pulled it open here. So this is my jQuery mobile Twitter application. That's pretty much the code. You can just quickly take a look and reflect. Everything that we spoke about is already shown there. <coughs> it calls an Ajax, uses JSONP as the way of getting the data back so that I don't have to go through this whole cross-domain madness. And here, list.append, you are just throwing some simple markup in there and you are through. And list.refresh. Let's quickly run this. Uh, right? So that is, uh, that's nice, ain't it? I said there was no real physics based scrolling but there's this nice plugin called iScroll you can go check it out it's by a company called Cubic there's a plugin called iScroll which actually makes your jQuery mobile applications have physics based scrolling so uh, if you insist that you want to continue using jQuery mobile then, then this is the way to go now let me show you the other piece of code very quickly now that I have to scroll. <laughs> so I have a template. Everything that we have seen, I have not done anything new here. You have like a like a title, you have like a template, and you have created a panel, and you have a simple JSONP request here, as you see, and you're calling timeline.apply. Honestly, if you want to do code to code comparison, number of lines to number of lines comparison, they are not very different. Both of them achieve the same thing in a similar set of number of codes. Uh, and that is, and, and let us quickly run this. So, I had a little more control, so I actually put a nice little web font over there and kind of did a little more styling. But jQuery had the more app like look, and this actually has so that's that's about CSS. But then you can typically see the number of lines of code that you have to write for both these frameworks are, are sort of similar. Uh, let's quickly go back to the presentation. Yes, anyone, someone? Questions? jQuery mobile give any provision for local storage? Any 
jQuery mobile you need to have Dustin, but you can always write it. Um, jQuery mobile is more like a UI framework, so it's it's about doing UI. So if you want to do stuff around your data, you can always code for that. jQuery mobile won't probably come. Any other questions? So this componentization uh, doesn't all the application do the same way. Yeah. So so uh, so yes, if you are actually leaving it as a default look. Uh, you're going to have a uh, run of the mill application which are all looking the same. But uh, honestly speaking, I, I think this is a huge step. So, let me just quickly pull it. This is actually a great step forward to actually uh, have better control. Oh, not, not this one. Where the hell is that? Go to jQuery Mobile Thailand. Hey Harish, after yep. this we should wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull this up and I'm done. So let, let this uh, pull up. So the theme roller is actually a very good solution for actually styling your applications to a little more detail than what you can, but still his uh, point sort of uh, stays. So you can do stuff like this. And you actually get a different look. It's actually pretty nice. So it's, it's a good application. You should probably go and try that out. And for Sencha, uh, there is uh, SASS plus Compass sort of styling, which is actually far more controlled and far more nicer for advanced developers. So both of them have their own options. And I, I have run out of time. Please find me outside for uh, more questions. Uh, very quickly, beer, etc. today evening. Those are the coordinates. Uh, so it's uh, hcvram.com slash tech. Pretty much everything is hcvram. So if you have one, you pretty much have everything. Uh, I myself took GitHub hcvram and I forgot the password. And I somehow don't know how to retrieve it back. So hcvram x on, on GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>